So you all read the title of today's video. I don't even need an introduction because we already know the point. We're gonna go ahead and react to the top 30 pitching rotations in all of baseball going into the 2021 season. And I can't wait to look at the comments because for the most part, the worst 15 teams are pretty self-explanatory. But once we get into the top 15, that is where things are going to get interesting, especially the top 10. Where are the White Sox going to be? Where are the Yankees gonna be? Are they gonna put the Dodgers over the Padres and vice versa. We're going to stop speculating and just get into the list at the number 30 spots. I'm going to be frank with you guys. I might go a little bit quick on these teams that don't really have the best rotations because when they're projecting the Baltimore Orioles to not have one single starting pitcher with a FIP below five, I mean, John Means has been an all-star, but he's not a very good all-star in my opinion. So if, if you're watching this, Mr. Means, I don't mean to be mean. Same story for the Pittsburgh Pirates. You have Steven Braltz and then Chad Cool had a pretty decent 2020. Mitch Keller is a top prospect, but to me, he's probably still a project in the making, maybe a year or two away from being a top-end starter. The Chicago Cubs, if Kyle Hendricks was not their ace, they would be the worst rotation in baseball by far. Zach Davies was really solid for the Padres. I believe that he was on the Padres. Alec Mills has thrown a no-hitter and Jake Arrieta, he's done the same, but they're all kind of just very if. The only reason why they're at the number 28 spot and not behind the Pirates or the Orioles is because of Kyle Hendricks, who has the fifth or sixth lowest ERA plus in the last five years. So let's move on to the Tigers at the number 27 spot. Now, I have not looked at this list, so it's kind of surprising to see the Tigers at 27, considering their top prospects of Casey Mize and Tarek Skubal, and in my opinion, opinion, Matthew Boyd is the best bad pitcher in all of baseball. When he's on his game, he's elite, but for whatever reason, he just gives up the long ball far too often. So the Tigers at 27, I can respect that. The Rockies, now this can be sneaky because Herman Marquez, Kyle Freeland, and Antonio Santatella with John Gray as your number four starter. Don't be surprised if the Rockies have three different starters with 10 to 15 wins. Honestly, they might be the only guys that can get them wins, but I love Marquez. He would be an ace on pretty much 90% of the other clubs in Major League Baseball. Kyle Freeland is a beast. And then Sensatella, he can surprise you as well, but he is injured. The Marlins, Sandy Alcantara or Alcantara, Pablo Lopez, Eliza Hernandez, Sixto Sanchez, and Trevor Rogers. I fully believe that Trevor Rogers is going to be a superstar one day and same with Sixto Sanchez. He just chose the number of 45 because he wants to be Pedro Martinez. But if my name is Sixto, I would have chosen the number six, but just with those two guys alone with Rodgers and Sanchez, I believe that they can leapfrog some of the teams that we're about to talk about. So for me, the Marlins, they're kind of a C-grade rotation, but they can be a B at the end of the year. If Alcantara and if Sixto Sanchez and even Hernandez, who was really good last year, if they perform, and Pablo Lopez is no slouch as well. The Royals, I would probably rank the Marlins ahead of the Royals. Mike Miner, we don't know if he's gonna have a bounce back season. Brad Keller and Danny Duffy and Brady Singer. Singer is young and I really like his projections going forward. However, uh, Mike Miner, I just, he's a little older for me. But yeah, for me, I'd probably rank the Marlins ahead of the Royals. Now let's move on to the Diamondbacks. Here we go. Madison Bumgarner, I don't project him being the ace. Now he's being paid like the ace, but Zach Gallen is in his prime. He is one of the more underrated players in all of baseball. He's in the same class as Kyle Hendricks. I'm hoping Luke Weaver has a bounce back season. And then Caleb Smith, a few days ago, had a pretty good start in spring training. Now again, it's spring training. Take it with a grain of salt. But Bumgarner was pretty solid in spring. If he has a bounce back year, fine. I would definitely put them at 23, just ahead of the Royals. Maybe not even the Marlins. I would say the Marlins might be your 23. Let's move on over to the Rays. This is disheartening because a year ago, when they were led by Blake Snell and Charlie Morton, they were a top 10 rotation in all of baseball. And now look at them. Tyler Glass now, who cannot throw a strike on the corners. I'm hoping that he figures it out because he can be so special. He's developing a slider cutter. Maybe that works out. Maybe it doesn't. Ryan Yarbrough, he throws decent. Chris Archer's awful. Michael Walker has been awful. Rich Hill is probably my number three starter. And then Luis Patino, he's young, but I'm not sure if he's going to make the starting rotation in 2021. The Rangers. Um, I, I don't think so. I don't, uh, okay. God, mm, I don't even know what to say about this. 21 is a little... Overrated, in my opinion. Yes, I'm going to use that dreaded word. Overrated. Kyle Gibson, Jordan Lyles. I don't know who Coley 
Ari Hara is. I'll have to do my research. Dane Dunning is a stud in the mic. Fulton Newich, he was not good with the Braves, and he threw a little temper tantrum, so we'll see if he bounces back. 21 for the Rangers, a little bit suspect. I'd probably move them even lower than the Marlins. The Giants, very respectable at number 20 with Johnny Cueto. Kevin Gosman was lights out in 2020. Anthony Descalfani, Alex Wood, do not sleep on him, and then Logan Webb. I truly believe that the Giants can be a top 15 rotation by the end of the year if Cueto and Descalfani can really bounce back and stay healthy. The A's. Ooh, I really wanted the A's to be much higher, but when you have Chris Bassett and Sean Manaya, Jesus Lozardo is going to be a stud and same with AJ Puck. But Frankie Montas is injured quite often. Mike Fires is a, you know, he's not very good in the whole FIP department. He doesn't strike out a ton of people. He gives up a ton of home runs. So not a good recipe for success. So the A's are coming at my number 19 spot, which is surprising because we haven't even seen the Angels yet. Oh my God, I forgot about the Angels. The Astros are led by Zach Greinke, Jake Odorizzi, Lance McCullers Jr., Jose Urquidy, and Kristen Javier. Now, as you can see, we have Framber Valdez, who is most likely going to be on the shelf. They lost out on Forrest Whitley. Justin Verlander is gone for the season. So if they had JV and Framber Valdez healthy and Forrest Whitley maybe as a five starter or a spot six starter, I would say the Astros, honestly, with their healthy players, they'd be a top 10 rotation. I'm going to say that right now, but they got it right. 18 is nice considering they're... They're super injured. The Boston Red Sox are at the number 17 spot with Martin Perez, who I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna poo-poo, but I mean, Nathan Ovaldi, Eduardo Rodriguez, and Garrett Richards, no. Tanner Hook, or Hoke, I don't know how to say his name. No, 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 even though the Astros have injuries, they still have a better rotation than the Red Sox, and so do the Marlins. I don't agree with this whatsoever. Nick Pavetta is a spin rate god, but that has not translated into a big, leak success. I know Nick Pavetta fans are going to destroy me for that, but Red Sox at number 17, that's way too high. I'm sorry. All right, well, I saw this coming. The Indians did, in fact, move down after losing out on Carlos Carrasco, but still, Shane Bieber, absolutely dominant. Zach Plesak, I know he's kind of uh, interesting off the field and not a lot of people like him. He makes questionable decisions, but he was, I mean, honestly, if he pitched the entire year, he would have been in the Cy Young Award race. We have Aaron Savali, Tristan McKenzie, Cal Quantrill, and then one of the players that I'm interested in is Logan Allen. So not Logan Allen on the screen, but who they just drafted last year. He's going to be a stud. I truly believe in him, but 16 for the Cleveland baseball team. I mean, I guess I understand that, but uh, a little bit, a little bit low for me, especially when you're putting the angels in front of him. What the f I almost cussed. I don't cuss on this channel, but what in God's name is this? Dylan Bundy, Andrew Heaney, Jose Quintana, Alex Cobb, Griffin Canning. You're telling me that's better than Bieber, Police Act? No, I'm, I'm, I'm already about to. I'm about to just. I, I don't have words. I'm about to lose my. You know what? There is absolutely no way that you, that, that any baseball person should be putting the Angels ahead of Cleveland, who is a pitching factory. God, that is no. I'm gonna move on because the Angels should be down towards the Rangers. And I mean, come on, man. I know Shohei Otani is back and healthy, but what are we doing, fan graphs? I really like your website, and I believe that you guys are smart, baseball-minded people. But that's rough. The Cardinals at 14. You have Jack Flaherty, easily one of my favorite players in baseball. Carlos Martinez is slowly but surely coming back to a middle of the road starter. I believe that he's gonna have a bounce back year. Ponce de Leon was awful. Adam Wainwright is very underrated, even at his old age. And then Miles Mikolas, I always say his last name wrong, very solid last year for the 14th spot. I guess I'll give them that, but still, I would rather have the Cleveland rotation over even the Mariners rotation. Like, no, man, I cannot believe that they ranked Cleveland so low. And that's not even me being biased. That just doesn't make sense. Marco Gonzalez in the same conversation as the other guys that have been underrated, like Kyle Hendricks, he's really good just because he doesn't throw very hard. Not a lot of people talk about him. Yusei Kikuchi had a very surprising 2020 season. Who knows if he's going to be able to fulfill that big contract that he got. Justice Sheffield, James Paxton, Justin Dunn, and Logan Gilbert can be the outlier. If Logan Gilbert comes up and is a stud, watch for the Mariners to be a top, probably 12 to 11. I think 13 is pretty solid. I just don't know if they're going to get better and better, especially considering Kikuchi is kind of the wild card. The Twins, this makes sense. You have Barrios, who can be a Cy Young pitcher, but for whatever reason, just has not been able to stay consistent. We all know Maeda is an absolute stud. Pineda, J.A. Happ, Matt Shoemaker, 
a couple years ago before he got hit in the head with a comebacker was honestly about to start the all-star game he was electric and then randy dominic the former uber driver i think he's really good as well so number 12 the twins this is getting a little bit dicey i am um okay the blue jays have hungjin ryu robbie ray tanner roark steven matz nate pearson ross stripling I mean, that's a very deep rotation, I will have to say. Tyler Chatwood as your number seven or eight starter, and even Tommy Malone, it's projected that he's not going to get a ton of innings, but Ross Stripling has been pretty solid, especially down in LA. So I can see the Blue Jays at the 11 spot, and that's just because Hungjin Ryu has been so good, and I believe that Nate Pearson's going to come back healthy. He's dealing with a groin injury. Brandon Woodruff, Josh Lindblom, Corbin Burns, all I have to say is Woodruff and Corbin Burns, and they are easily a top 10 rotation. So I I can fully get behind this. Jordan Zimmerman, huh? I forgot that he was even in baseball. Once upon a time, a Cy Young caliber player, and then he just fell off the face of the earth. I believe that he was in Detroit or something like that. He was really good in Detroit for a year or two, and especially with the Nationals, and then God, he fell off. The Braves, Max Fried, Charlie Morton, Drew Smiley, Mike Soroka, Ian Anderson. Now, okay, I don't know who is going to be in the eighth spot, but I'm going to say right now that you cannot put who's in the eighth spot. <laughs> Oh, you really got me, fan graphs. Aaron Nola, Zach Wheeler, Zach Eflin, ahead of Max Fried, Charlie Morton, Mike Soroka, Drew Smiley, Ian Anderson. That is funny. That is super funny. And look out for Huascar Yanoa. Dude's going to be disgusting. Bryce Wilson. That is absolutely... <laughs> I just have to laugh that off. I'm sorry, Phillies fans. You do not have a better rotation than the Braves. Even if you're a fan of the Phillies, I'm pretty sure that you can admit that right now. Let's move the heck on to the number seven spot. We have the Reds. Absolutely agree with this. TJ Antone is going to have a monster year. When you have Luis Castillo, Sonny Gray, Tyler Maley, I mean, that is a legit rotation. But look for them to get moved if they do not start off hot. The White Sox at number six, when they have one, two, they have two potential Cy Young caliber pitchers and Lance Lynn and Lucas Giolito. Dallas Keuchel was fantastic in 2020. And Dylan Cease, he is going to be a stud if he can put it together. He's kind of in the same boat as Tyler Glass now. Amazing, nasty stuff, but cannot pitch to contact. The Nationals at five. I mean, when you have Scherzer and a healthy Strasburg and John Lester and Patrick Corbin, absolutely, I would agree with that. The Mets, the Mets are behind. I don't even see the Yankees, but the Mets are behind the Yankees? Excuse me, Jacob DeGrom, Marcus Stroman, Carlos Carrasco, Taiwan Walker, David Peterson, Noah Syndergaard. No, no, the Yankees. I get, okay, they put the Yankees in third place. I No, I don't believe so. Garrett Cole, nasty. We don't know which version of Corey Kluber we're going to get. And same with Jamison Tyon because he's coming back from Tommy John. Jordan Montgomery is very solid. Domingo Herman is on a comeback tour. Luis Severino, who knows if he's going to be good. I would take... I mean, you have Jacob DeGrom. You have Noah Syndergaard coming back. Carlos Carrasco pitching in the National League. That is going to help him significantly because he's no longer facing the DH. So I would flip the Mets and the Yankees. I would actually put the Yankees behind the Nationals. And don't get me wrong, I believe that the Yankees are going to make the World Series, but not because of their starting rotation. At the number two spot, they went the Padres. <laughs> oh, no, wait. The Dodgers. That's the Dodgers. Oh, 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 I was fully expecting to see the Padres because I need to collect my thoughts. I need to collect my thoughts. Trevor Bauer, Cy Young. Walker Buehler, going to win a Cy Young. One of the best postseason pitchers of all time through his first few starts. Clayton Kershaw, Cy Young. David Price, Cy Young. Julio Urias almost won the 2020 World Series MVP. You have Jimmy Nelson, Tony Gonsolin, Dustin May. What? I'm sorry. I am not disrespecting the Padres. They are my number two team because you cannot argue with that one through seven of the Dodgers. That is so much depth. I mean, the Padres, again, don't get me wrong. They are elite with you, Darvish, Joe Musgrove. You have Blake Snell, Denilson Lamette, and Chris Paddock. But who knows if Lamette is going to be able to repeat what he did in 2020. Joe Musgrove, while he's been good, he has not been a top-end starter in the game of baseball. Now, his sabermetrics would suggest that he has been. However, I still need to see it if I want to believe it. You, Darvish, I chose him to win my Cy Young for the 2021 season. If Mackenzie Gore can be called up and if Chris Paddock has a bounce back season maybe you could get me on the number one spot but for me the Dodgers at number two that is disrespectful to what they've done over the last few years in terms of developing their talent and acquiring Trevor Bauer after just winning 
the World Series. So let me know in the comment section down below. Here is your number one team. I try to make this as entertaining as possible. Try to flip flop a few teams and talk about why one team should be ranked ahead of the other. So if you enjoyed, leave a like on this one. Do not be afraid to subscribe because we're on the road to 300,000 subs before opening day. Stay safe out there. Catch you all in the next one.